Well, we're currently about two blocks inside the area that was known as the chop and what a difference just a couple days, a couple of hours make. Here is the East Precinct and a lot of work is happening now to both secure it and then uh, get it operational, which they say will happen as soon as it is safe. And if you look down um, Pine Street, you can see those um, patrol officers heading out on the bicycles. That's where the line of remaining protesters are and it'll be some time before everything returns back to normal. Hundreds of officers working alongside an army of city crews on Seattle's Capitol Hill. The Capitol Hill organized protest zone, the CHOP, is just a memory. And Tuesday, most of the physical reminders were clear. Two weeks ago, I mean, I saw the, the, the umbrellas and the tear gas. So I, it, between that and this, it's completely different. Emily Zaylig, for the first time in weeks, is seeing her physical therapist in person. But before that appointment, she can't help but reflect on all that's happened. You know, I feel a little sad that it's all over <laughs> because there was some something big about the movement. More than three weeks ago, Seattle police abandoned the East Precinct after a relentless push by protesters, a building that was claimed by the people. Today, the paint has been wiped clean. The park that once housed hundreds is closed for the time being. But not all the protesters have gone home. Overnight, live stream cameras captured yet another confrontation. More than two dozen protesters were arrested near Broadway and Pine for refusing to leave. Police held the line. And by morning, the cleanup continued. As a photographer, we're here to gather content and make sure that we're preserving the, the history. Street photographer Kiyoki Silvano is trying to capture what he can before the majority of the graffiti or artwork, depending on who you ask, is pressure washed or painted over. I'm still. Uh, at, at a loss of words. It's a lot different from seeing all the people that were here, that were living here, that had made a home here for the last couple of weeks. But not all will be lost. Remember that Black Lives Matter painting stretching across Pine? Well, today, city crews took steps towards making it permanent. A lasting reminder of what happened on these half dozen city blocks. And while this is a very busy, uh, very active working environment, important to point out it is not closed off to the public. You can get past the police barricades. You simply have to have a legitimate reason to be in here, which can include going to one of the stores. The only catch though, you'll have to be uh, pretty convincing to the officers at the barricade as it is up to the officer's discretion to let you inside. In Seattle, Sebastian Robertson, King 5 News. All right, Sebastian, thank you. This morning, Seattle Police Chief Carmen Best spoke with King 5. We asked her about the plans moving forward. We're hoping that during that time frame, we'll be able to create dialogue, be able to move on to look forward to re-envision, as I've talked about before, how we're going to do policing, how we're going to engage all the voices, particularly the young voices of people who are engaged uh, in these demonstrations in and around the precinct. Chief Best says there are a lot of ideas floating around about what comes next. She acknowledged calls to defund the department, but emphasized the need for more resources in Seattle communities. Now, is part of the cleanup on Capitol Hill, the giant raised fist sculpture in Cal Anderson Park came down today. It's not going anywhere. The city plans to store it along with other pieces of art, including murals. 